There wasn't a pop on the first day. The opening price was the opening price, that's right? right? Yes, that's totally right. Everyone is looking at the $26 reference price and calculating the closing day and, and looking at a you know 48% pop. That's not right. It opened at 38.50. That's really the price we should be looking at and comparing performance to. 20, the reference price, no one was buying or selling at that price. No one was agreeing ahead of time to buy at that price. That was just something the New York Stock Exchange put out as a guide. Yet, Folks are still looking at this as positive momentum for Slack. Gene, how optimistic are you about Slack's future growth? I mean, I'm most optimistic, and part is because of this concept of future of work. And they're, they've been zeroing in on this communication piece, and really that's the substance of why they've gone public. But they have an opportunity to extend that beyond communication into workflow in terms of kind of uh, using AI to give recommendations to people about how to use their day nudges. Humans instinctively uh, become distracted and get off task and they can uh, really evolve their platform to helping some of the efficiencies of work. And so the point is simple, is that there is growth opportunities, new markets uh, that uh, Slack can pursue. And I think that will be good for the stock longer term. Now, in a way, there's an irony about Slack where it's called the email killer, but in a way, you're also more connected to work if you use Slack and you use Slack religiously. Ellen, who wants more nudges, as, as, as Jean said? And it, if the goal is to sort of minimize nudges, minimize your, uh, or, you know, sort of improve or change your connectedness to work, but you're only then working more, is Slack really doing its job? I think that might end up being a central question that we ask ourselves about Slack for the next few years. You know, I asked a question on Twitter the other day about how people relate to Slack and how it compares to email. And I got a lot of interesting responses where people are just sharing how, you know, it's, it's tough. It's like the more people use Slack, the more it becomes the place where everyone is just asking you to do stuff. And people were saying, you know, it's like email and, and in some ways it's better, but in some ways it's worse because the barrier to entry to writing a Slack message is a lot lower than it would be to writing an email. And so, and it is this expectation of being something you should respond to instantly. And so people are having, I think, uh, an evolving relationship with whether Slack is actually helping them be more productive or less. My sense is, honestly, people who use Slack in a smart way are probably getting more done. People who are just using it to chat are maybe not. And so I feel like it falls on Slack to make sure that it's easy for users to understand how to use it in a really effective way. And that would probably require a lot more education on their part or really smart design so that someone who just starts using Slack isn't going to get caught up in instant messages and seven different channels and, and feel overwhelmed. Interesting. So, Gene, do you think direct listings are going to become more of the norm? Because to be fair, they didn't actually have a pop, but they did get to take home any difference between 26 and 38 50 because they didn't open at 26. They opened at 38.50. Yeah, undoubtedly, I think this is the future. I come from a background uh, in investment banking and, and can think of that as an area that is, is, uh, is ripe for disruption. There has been a decade of talk around uh, direct listings and that has really never played out. The last big one was Spotify almost two years ago. So uh, what's the, the message here is that this is a better instrument, a better vehicle for uh, becoming public because it achieves two things. One is better tr price transparency, which investors want, and separately is lower fees, which companies want. Because of that, I think that this is an undeniable trend. There are such large forces in place uh, around the IPO process that it will take, in my opinion, a decade before we see half of the companies uh, doing direct listings. But this is only going to increase.